What's up, it's Nez, and hello everyone, and welcome back to The Fatal 12. Summer break is over and my term just started, so I apologize for the delays on any new episodes. With that said, the last episode was pretty emotional. Miharu bursts into tears because Rink is too dense to recognize her love. Hopefully things turn out better this episode. Oh, oh, Miharu. Miharu is already here when I get to school. She gives me her usual smile before she continues. Meharu, our waifu, please forgive us. Senpai? Hi there, Naomi. Naomi comes running over to me from the gate. <laughs> and she trips. Oh. She almost trips in her haste, but she manages to catch herself. Seems like she's just as clumsy as ever when she lets her guard down. She's been waiting for me at the school gate, just like she said she would yesterday. Oh right, this episode we're gonna tell her all about the divine selection. Rinka, you sure you really want to bring Naomi into this world? There's little point to her coming all the way to my classroom anyway, considering it's a big detour for her. But wouldn't it be safer to talk about this at the Lion House in private? Exactly. Following that, we both make our way to the station. Where are we going though? Ooh, the park. One transfer from Shinjuku to the metro and two stops later you'll find this park. There's an entrance fee but it's fairly inexpensive. It's one of the biggest parks in Tokyo and was apparently an old samurai's garden back in the day. I'm not sure why, but it was restructured to resemble a mix between Japanese, English, and French parks. There are normally tourists all over the place, but it's a lot less busy on weekdays. That makes it ideal for a change of pace. I came here a lot when I was a kid. There's one place in particular that I really enjoyed visiting. Apparently. There's a so small bench in the middle of the garden. We sit down there, taking in our surroundings in the clock tower-esque building in the distance. Few buildings in Shinjuku stand out as much as that one. Part of me wants to say it's the building for a telephone company. The sound of the greenery whispering in the wind is nice and relaxing. An odd sensation washes over me out of nowhere. It makes me wonder whether or not I've actually been here before. Huh, that sounds ominous. But I'm sure of it. I know I've been here plenty of times as a kid. I take a deep breath and get ready to tell her all about divine selection. Rinka, no! And that was it. Rinka, senpai. Naomi! She utters my name in a painful manner once I finished telling her everything. She started to get teary-eyed midway but I kept going. I doubt she would want me to stop without painting her the whole picture. She nodded attentively from beginning to end, as if to reassure me that the decision to tell her was the right one. You know what, I'm really glad that Naomi's very observant. It gives her more depth as a character and it doesn't just make her the cute Gohai. And I would very much like to stay alive. Saying that, she takes my hand in hers. The surface of her hand is cold but I can feel the warmth underneath. There's no doubt the same goes for me. That warmth serves as proof that I'm alive. It's okay, Naomi. You were having terrifying dreams of us melting in a fire. She doesn't doubt what I have to say for a second. Chances are that my cause of death lines up with her dream so much that she has no choice but to believe it. It gives her an answer to why she's having that dream too, although it does nothing to resolve the situation at hand. Oh, don't worry, Miharu already gave her life to us. 
I wasn't sure whether or not I should tell her about Miharu, but I decided to do so in the end. On the one hand, there's no point to trying to keep certain things to myself. On the other, I simply gave in to my desire to lighten up my own burden. It's because she wholeheartedly loves us! She's referring to Miharu's statement regarding to her own participation. That she's willing to give her life for mine. So wait, you wouldn't give your life for us? Something tells me that Naomi is the worst waifu of the two. Oh, don't worry, Rinka, we're gonna find a way to game this game and try to save both of you. Another breeze blows through, catching our hair. It's a surprisingly cold breeze for this time of year. I can see the sunset off in the distance. The mixture of blue and orange on the horizon somehow resembles a wavering heart to me. She is! I don't want her waifu to die! She's the complete opposite of me. She knows exactly what she wants to do, whereas I'm sitting here unable to make any sort of decision. She might have already gotten started on gathering info based on the cards she received. In fact, I'm certain she has. The determination in her eyes makes it apparent. Her attitude at school isn't any different from usual, but that's just further proof of her resolve. There's no doubt she's doing as much research as she can elsewhere. And she's doing it all for my sake. I'd say that all the time she's been spending at work lately was just a front for said research, but that'd be overthinking things. That's something she's been doing for a while now. Saying that, I get up off the bench. Or I try to, but Naomi stops me by grabbing my sleeve. Oh no, Naomi, don't tell me you want to help us. She nods firmly in response. No! Naomi, I don't want to put you in danger! But the look on your face has so much resolve, I can't help but accept. Naomi is so brave! It's not that I'm struggling to make a choice, I'm simply avoiding it altogether. Naomi makes sure to be as frank as possible with her words. And they turn my entire world upside down. The reality that I've been running from, my responsibility to choose whether I'll live or die, finally sinks in. Before I know it, the sky's been dyed entirely in orange. No, Naomi, that's too dangerous! Oh no! Naomi! Her words are filled to bursting with resolve. You finally realize which of Naomi or Miharu you actually love? She turns to face me, waiting for my follow up comment. Having the truth put up in front of me like that makes me realize what I'm most afraid of. In this world, it's kill or be killed. 
人の命を踏み台にしてまで生きるべき存在かなんてわからないんだ自分の未練さえ曖昧なままだし Let me tell you what your regret is Your regret is that you can't choose between Miharu or Naomi or Mao I've seen the expressions of those who were mere moments away from being elected I wouldn't describe them as sad, angry, or even accepting. They simply looked powerless in the face of what was about to happen. Those were the faces of people who died without being able to fulfill what they wanted out of life. Meanwhile, I'm not sure if I have that much invested into anything to begin with. That's why part of me feels like my life isn't worth being saved in exchange for theirs. Mishima senpai ya watashi ga Rinka senpai ni i k i t e i te ho shi te kimochi ja tarimasen ka? Yes, it is! You two are a reason for living. Don't live for your sake, Rinka. Live for Naomi and Miharu. Because we're her senpai, you dummy. Why would she go this far for my sake? Oh, yeah, that's right. We jumped in the way of the fire and protected Naomi from dying. And there we go. Team Rinka of the Divine Selection has been established. Oh, Naomi, don't cry. You're gonna make me cry. She turns her gaze towards the sky, desperately trying to fight back the tears that are ready to fall at any moment. It's a weird time to have a thought like this, but I can't help but consider just how vast the sky truly is. Naomi has nothing but praise for the coffee I make. She's made me realize that I'm avoiding reality. That and a number of other important things. We will not let you go near or death. We will protect you from her sharp fangs and her head crushing thighs. The tears have started to stream down her face by the time I say that. Unable to get the words out, she bites her lower lip and nods her head. Will you form a contract with us and become a Maho Shoujo? Rinka is a cute creature with red eyes, she can probably make contracts like that. I extend my right hand to her, which she takes. Her nervousness melts away with the beaming smile she gives me afterwards. Her tear stained cheeks serve as a nice contrast to that. Her tears don't stop flowing even though she's all smiles. Just then, the announcement comes that it is almost time for the park to close for the day. I take the opportunity to tell Naomi that I'll see her tomorrow, and then I make my way home. Well, we've brought her into this. When I get back, I open up Lion House for a bit. After messaging Naomi during break time, I decide to keep the store closed tomorrow so we can focus on gathering intel and organizing our thoughts. Hooray, we're finally playing the game after two weeks! I figure hitting up the library will be a good idea since we'll have access to newspapers and the like, but considering I still don't know where to start, I decide it's best for us to meet up there first. We don't need to worry about keeping quiet there at least. I also make sure to ask Naomi not to tell anyone about this. Part of me considers telling Mao at first since we're close friends, but considering she's known Miharu far longer than Naomi, I decide it's best not to. It'd be far too much of a burden for her to bear, and the last thing I want is to ruin the relationship the three of us have right now. <sighs> Thinking back on everything that's happened so far, I get ready to close the shop for the day. Barely any customers have come around, so I only have to clean up a few things. 
I clean up those things, carry in the signboard and some plants from outside, and put out the trash. The door looks a bit dirty too, so I make sure to wipe it down. While I'm wiping it, I hear footsteps heading my way. I don't pay them much mind considering it's not rare for people to pass by at this time of night, but they stop right in front of the store. Uh oh. Thinking it's a customer, I turn around to inform them that we're closed. But I stop mid-sentence when I see the woman to whom the footsteps belong. The moment I stand up straight, she grabs me by the shoulders, pushes me against the door and then into the store. Oh, fuck. I was actually expecting Odette, but this might actually be worse. Her words come out loud and rapid. Her voice sounds like her throat is ready to explode. But I'd say she's more anxious than anything else. That's why her shouting actually helps me to approach the situation with heightened composure. Rather than answering her question, I opt to shoot one right back at her. I don't know her name, but I recognize the face. She's one of the people I've seen in the dream world. Composed as I may seem, it's not enough to keep my nerves calm. I can feel myself working up a cold sweat. Even the most minor thing here could act as a hint for her, so I need to watch what I say. Hell no, ya bitch, we don't wanna die! She slams her hand against the door, closing the distance between us even more. Yo, personal space, bitch! And yet, I'm not afraid. That's right, stare her down! Mainly because I keep in my mind why she's so anxious in the first place. The only reason she's asking me this is because she's not entirely sure that I am who she thinks I am. Meanwhile, numeral 12 gained her name card from the woman he eliminated during the first round, if memory serves. Bitch, why would we ever do that? I don't doubt that I'd be panicking if this was numeral 11 or 12 asking, because they're quite terrifying. But it's the same dread I feel from competing with people like them that allows me to remain calm here and now. Compared to them, she looks like your average woman. Slender and pretty, although you can tell she looks overtired. There's no doubt that she's been getting little sleep. She's wearing what I believe is a shawl atop a hospital gown. Okay, fine. I'm starting to feel bad for this woman because she's really desperate. And she obviously doesn't get how this game works. But no, bitch, we're not gonna tell you our death or regret. My silence makes her all the more agitated. Ha! <laughs> love! Rinka doesn't even know that Miharu loves her. <laughs> Feels bad, man. My patience starts to wear thin, which causes me to place my hands on her shoulders and shove her away from me. I must have pushed her a bit too hard since she stumbles backwards. She falls and lands in the hard concrete. I don't think that counts, but I'm still gonna yell it out. World Star! <laughs> I apologize without thinking. Showing sympathy to other participants, my enemies in other words, probably isn't the best idea. I ask but receive no answer. All she does is stare down at the ground and mutter something to herself. <laughs> Following that, she collapses under her own weight. Okay, judging by her weak body in hospital gown, I think she might be a patient with a terminal illness. That might be her cause of death. Also, she seems averse to having us call the ambulance. Maybe she escaped from the hospital somewhere. So if we go find some hospitals nearby, we might get to learn her name if we just ask for a patient that just escaped. Her sentence trails off there. Judging by her steady breathing, she seems to have fallen asleep as opposed to having passed out. I spot the name of the hospital she was admitted to written on the hem of her gown. It only takes a 10 minute walk from here. She doesn't want to get in an ambulance for whatever reason, but I can't just leave her here. Fortunately, she's rather light, so I opt to give her a piggyback ride. Rinka, you're being dangerously compassionate. After I lock the store up, I proceed to the hospital. When I arrive, the nurse I speak to showers me with praise. It's hardly surprising. I think most people would praise a high schooler who has obviously exhausted herself by carrying a patient all the way to the hospital in the middle of the night. 
The nurse wastes no time in taking her away, so I guess she really is a patient here. Thanks to this, I managed to learn her name as well. Kamibuchi Keiko. While she's always had a frail disposition, things have gotten worse for her once she gave birth. I don't pry any deeper, but I doubt they would have told me much more. Okay, something tells me that she might have died from giving birth. The only reason they told me as much as they did was to make sure I knew who it was that I helped in the first place. So, yeah. That it should. Arka mentioned that we'd obtain new cards whenever we discovered vital pieces of information in the real world. So, yeah. Chances are I didn't get one because I don't have it with me. Is that part of the mechanics? You have to have the book with you at all times? Or wouldn't the new card just appear in the book while it's at home? I'm aware of its importance, but I tend to leave it behind since it's heavy. Either way, I should leave considering visiting hours have long passed. Curious as I am about Keiko, I make my way back home. Once I return to my room and get ready for bed, I take a seat at the table on which my book rests. There we go, a new card! Little bits of light are pouring out between the book's pages. Needless to say, this is the first time I've seen this happen, in the real world no less. I take a moment to prepare myself and then I open it up. <laughs> the moment I do, the light begins to rise above the book itself. <laughs> All I can do is watch as it eventually congregates to one spot almost two feet above my table. It eventually molds itself in a rectangular shape, well to be more specific the shape of a card. Once the transformation is complete, the light dissipates. The card floats in midair for a brief moment before it quietly lays itself to rest atop the book. I can't hide my surprise witnessing something like that happening in the real world. Something similar happened in the dream world, but it's a whole different experience when it happens in your own room. I pick up the newly formed card. It's exactly the same as the others I have in terms of shape and make. The only difference is the content written on it. Numero 8. Name Kamibuchi Keiko. As expected, it's Keiko's name card. That's all though, I still don't know her cause of death or regret. It has to be related to that. The first ailment that comes to mind from childbirth is... My head starts to hurt all of a sudden. It doesn't take long for me to realize why either. It's because I just remembered how desperate Keiko looked. Ah, okay. So if we put two and two together, she must have died from childbirth, and her regret must be she couldn't live long enough to raise her child. Haha, -ha, what an easy elimination, easy clap. The way she was acting earlier proved that her regret ran deeper than I could comprehend. What I'm doing right now is akin to walking all over that. The more I try to imagine the circumstances of her death, the worse the pounding in my head becomes. That's when I remember Naomi's proposition to shoulder the burden along with me. I'm not prepared to handle this alone quite yet. Today's done a good job of showing me just how weak I am. Rather than thinking about this anymore, I turn my light off and choose to sleep instead. Oh, Sarita. Hello, Mao. Oh, Mao. I notice Maru getting ready for classes as usual when I arrive at school. Seeing her reminds me of the realization I came to yesterday, which prompts me to say something odd to Mao. Her voice and tone are lower than usual. She returns her usual self right away, almost as if to avoid continuing on with that topic. Well, what was that? Once school has ended, I meet up with Naomi before heading over to the library on our way back to Lion House. Fortunately, the library is only 5 minutes from Lion House, and on the very same path I took to get to the hospital last night. I make sure to fill her in on what happened last night as we make our way there. Her first reaction is to express her concern about me. She crinkles her nose when I mention that Keiko seems to have had a rougher go at life than I have, but then sighs in relief afterwards. Once at the library, we gather up some books regarding pregnancy. Part of me doesn't want to at first since we'll be painting a rather dubious image of ourselves, then again, this isn't the time to be worried about that. Yep, just two high school girls curious about sex and nothing wrong about that. Having gotten what we need, we make our way back to Lion House and spread the books out on one of the tables. 
この本でまずは死因になりそうな病気や症例がないかを調べてみましょう。She announces the plan with seemingly little issue. I can tell she's forcing herself to act composed. Normal people like us shouldn't have any reason to investigate someone's death like this. It doesn't help that it feels like we're digging into someone's private life without consent. That's one of the reasons behind my headache last night. Not to mention that in this case, it's about someone who's still alive. I pick up one of the books closest to me, while thinner than the card book, it's packed full of text. I probably shouldn't try my hand at this book like this when I know absolutely nothing about medicine. Thinking that, I pick up another one only to reach the same conclusion. The only stuff I read other than manga are novels, so ideally there will be something a bit simpler among all these. As I think this over, it leads me to repeating the same scenario over and over in my mind. Ano... Senpai? Yes? Eh? What happened? Maybe the book is It's not our fault that mangas are so much more appealing. She's using the book in her hands to obscure her face from below the eyes, which are glued onto me. Then why do you pick out these medical books in the first place? Now look, we've embarrassed ourselves in front of Naomi. That makes it pretty clear that I left Naomi in charge of picking out which books to get. I figured that'd be best, considering she's a bit of a bookworm. Neither am I. I nod my head after a brief hesitation. I wouldn't say I'm bad at studying, but there's no point in putting up a front, especially when my grades tell a different story, just like me. I pick up another book and peruse the table of contents. Naomi hides part of her face behind her book again, but I can see how focused her eyes are on its contents. Two hours later, I feel my concentration vanish into thin air. Did she find out anything? We're gonna take a little break, you want some coffee? She closes her book after I make my offer. I guess she's finished reading that one too, which makes for a total of three so far. Wow, she's fast. Meanwhile, I'm still stumbling through my first. The difference in reading speeds between someone who reads often and someone who doesn't is rather striking. I brew up some coffee for the both of us and bring it over to the table. I've spent so much time teaching her how to make coffee that I actually haven't had much opportunity to make some for her myself. It's always nice watching Naomi drink the coffee I make considering how much she seems to enjoy it. I have picked up on something myself, in truth. But asking for Naomi's input first seems like the best idea. I did not expect this to be a sex ed episode, but apparently it is. The book I've been reading says the same thing. Based on a study from 2014, only 3 out of 100,000 mothers die while giving birth. I'd assume Keiko is in her 20s or 30s. Even if it's the latter, there's only a 0.003% chance of it happening to her. For comparison's sake, a person's much more likely to be involved in some sort of fatal traffic accident than that. This stuff actually caught my attention while reading because it'll be relevant to me at some point in my future. Seems like Naomi read about the same study. You'd think we were revising test materials together or something. You need information that's 100% true and 100% you believe yourself. Those are the mechanics. Narodo. 
先輩の話だと概念が実存になるって言ってましたよねうん私もよく意味が分かってないんだけどさだとすれば情報がカードになるというのは先輩がちゃんと概念として情報を持っていないといけないと思うんです Look at our smart little Naomi figuring it out by herself. Now that the conversation's getting a bit complicated, I take a moment to mentally sort out all the info. The process behind making new cards involves giving information, thoughts rather a tangible form. Parker explained that much herself. How does one distinguish which piece of information is correct and turn that into a card then? Sorry, I'm sorry. 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 つまり先輩が日常会話の中で何気なく言ったことでも誰かの死因や未練に該当していたらカードになるのかそれとも例えばこの人はいつ症状が悪化したから死因はこれだろうって証拠みたいなものを先輩が把握していないといけないのかってことです。Kind of more like、that. そっかなるほどね。I cast my mind back to these past two weeks. I'm not the most chatty person, but I've definitely had a good number of conversations during that time. Chances are good that I've discussed things related to relevant information, so by that logic, I should have some extra cards already. And yet, yesterday was the first time I obtained a new card. In that case, it's probably the latter scenario that's required in order to make new cards. It's true, right? It's a very simple story. 辞書を最初から最後まで読めば大体の人は死因も未練も手に入れられることになっちゃいますもんねあんまりやりたくないけどね Well no, this is supposed to be a mystery thriller 命がかかっているならやるかもしれません That serves to remind me about how desperate Keiko looked I could tell that she had a specific force driving her Knowing that, chances are high that she'd read through all kinds of stuff if it meant possibly obtaining more cards. So, the senpai's scene no card of a scrutin I know, on a jigain come she didn't say. Senpai no I might not kill ya. What does she know, boy, yari sta, you may know, honey. Mota, Nanika. You mean we still don't think we died in that fire? We saw visions of our skin melting. So, in the end, it's all up to me remembering the exact details of what happened that day. I can't see myself doing that today, at least. The fact that it's yet to come back to me probably means I need something specific to trigger my memories. Yeah, we need to see that foreigner girl again. I push those thoughts away and Naomi back to the topic at hand. So, this is. What is the opinion of this? The opinion of this is the opinion of the opinion of this. カメブチさんの死因である可能性が高いと思いますでもそれじゃあ足りないんだねどうしてそうなのか理由や筋道を私がちゃんと理解していないといけないここで調べてるだけだと足りなそうですね私がお見舞いに行ったらまあ拒否されちゃうよね I am well aware of how much my hair causes me to stand out. Oh, what did you do? I was going to do a little bit of 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 a l It's clear from the way she's speaking that she's more nervous than usual. The same goes for me as well. There's no way we could have a happy chat about someone's possible cause of death. However, I'm not getting a headache like when I tried to do this on my own. Her being here to shoulder the part of the burden really does make things easier to bear. Now, the issue is how we go about digging deeper. Oh, I was going to get a little bit of a cake. I'm not going to get a cake. Saying that, she produces some chocolate, which I happily partake in. The sweet sensation that spreads throughout my body is almost enough to make me shiver with joy.
どうしたの単純なことでした私がケイコさんの家族に会えばいいんです You really think they talk to us strangers? ナオミがそれって危ないことじゃないはいでも私が会いに行く分には本人ならともかく家族なら何とかごまかせるかもしれません先輩がケイコさんを病院に運んだ件があるので念のため制服は着ないでいきますナオミ is a brave girl でもさ口止めとかされてるんじゃないの夢の世界の話って大人がそのまま大人に話せはしないと思うんですオブラートに包んだ言い方をしてるだから完璧じゃない気がします She has a point I had no issue telling her everything but there's no way I'd tell one of our teachers for example I'd probably be fine with telling my grand but definitely not my parents if they were around That goes double if I were Keiko's age. Abunai koto wa shimase. Dakara, watashi ni yarasete kudasai. Naomi about to go on her first mission. I hope she doesn't die. Naomi, so you engi dekiru? Ah, sore wo yuareru to. Oh no, this will be a disaster. She once again tucks her face behind the book and then pops part of it back out to speak to me after a moment. でも頑張ります先輩のためですもん本当頼もしいねナオミは問題はいつ行くかですけどやっぱり土日がいいかなって思いますどうして平日だと家族の人が来るのって夜になると思うんです遅くなるなら来られないかもでも土日なら少なくとも旦那さんお父さんは来ると思うんです早い方がいいと思うので土曜日に行きます I'm gonna expand on what I said and say that Naomi might actually be the smartest out of all of our waifus わかったただ私もついていく何かあった時に大声を出せば駆けつけられるとこで待ってるから She nods her head in response understanding that I won't back down We try to discuss other possibilities regarding her death after that, but it basically turns into a study session about pregnancy. After walking Naomi to the train station, I make my way back to Lion House. I have to admit, I am surprised by just how fruitful our efforts today have been. It goes to show how little I've been thinking about divine selection before talking to Naomi about it. It's gotten me to question my own life. I still can't say for sure whether or not if it's right for me to want to survive. However, I can say with certainty that I don't want to leave my friends and family upset over my death. That's enough motivation for now. I'm sure Keiko has the same result pushing her forward. In fact, hers is probably stronger, considering she has a child. I was told I lost my parents in an accident almost immediately after I was born, so I'm not too sure what it's like to experience the warmth and love parents can provide. The only thing I have to go on is when my grand spoke to me about my mom. Her expression showed an entirely different kind of love that she holds for her granddaughter. The more I consider Keiko and her situation, the more empathy I feel for her. Which makes me think of her even more. What I should be doing right now is casting my emotions aside and gathering as much info on her as possible. Even Naomi is pushing herself to do what she can for my sake. The last thing I want is to let that go to waste. Be to get some rest. Thus, I crawl into bed and close my eyes. 